Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another week of the Trad Geeks vlog. This week we're talking about Sitka gear. Uh, in five days we'll be hitting the woods. Archery season's coming. Really stoked on whitetail. Absolutely can't wait. Um, but just wanted to carve out some time. Both Kevin and I are, are expecting to um, put the, this video out together where we're going to cover um, the different layers how we see ourselves using them, what application, uh, and some of the features of them. So it is Sunday, Finney and I are out hanging our last few trail cameras, and Finney's carting me around with his new little 250. How about her, bud? Fun! <laughs> so we have a, a stand right down here between the cornfield. This is our driveway, actually, and then our food plots are up here on the left side. These deer like to transition, so it creates a nice little pinch here where the driveway is. Pin stands right down here. I think this is going to be the spot that uh, he could potentially kill a doe or a buck this year with this compound. So we're going to run down. This camera's been up for a couple weeks. We haven't checked it. We're going to see what the doe are doing, what time they're coming through, or the bucks. But I'm thinking this is more of a doe spot, so or at least the early season. Um, so hopefully, this little guy gets his first deer. So we'll see what, see what the camera says here. I forgot my card reader. Sent my little goat after it. Got it. Hey Finn, where are we headed this afternoon? Where are we headed this afternoon? Yeah, buddy. What? Said, yeah, buddy. Thanks for getting that for me, bud. Can't show you what's on the camera about this. Shape. Said the card was full. What? Said the card was full. Oh no! Here you go. I'm sure the people watching this are gonna love that that camera right in my eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> That's if this works without giving us a bunch of hassle. I don't know if anybody uses these little stealth cam card readers, but and if they're good for you, but they're absolutely horrible for me. I have to plug them in and out and in and out, and mess with them just to get the reader to work. You know this is gonna go on internet. Yep, I know. <laughs> Come on, not have all day, do we, bud? No, we don't. Tree stand. Sometimes if you just plug it in different, it reads it for whatever reason. Well, for some reason, that card reader didn't want to work, so I won't be able to inform you what was moving through there. But lots of good tracks, so that's probably what we're going to set opening morning. Um, but we're headed to a penguin game tonight. And then hopefully when I get home, I can go over all the Sitka gear that I'll be wearing here for the 2018 Pennsylvania archery season. So, we'll get back home, head to the Penguin game, huh, bud? Keep going, we'll turn around down at the bottom. Alright, starting them off, we're going to talk about the Merino Core Lightweight Bottoms. These guys were new this year, 17.5 micron Merino wool, uh, spun around a nylon core. 
All right, these guys are extremely comfortable, um, kind of almost like pajama bottoms, I'd say, but really lightweight, uh, gonna be probably on me 99% of the time, uh, even when it's really, really hot outside. Um, just really comfortable, great at wicking moisture, all that good stuff. So, all right, next up on the list is the ESW line. Um, this is their ultra lightweight, hot weather hunting gear. Um, so early season, early October in PA, we might have some weather in the 80s, um, but we might have some snow too, it's Pennsylvania. So I have scouted in these multiple times in mid 80s, low 90s, really, really comfortable. Um, just uh, lightweight polyester stretch uh, in the arms. Uh, so perfect for those hot sits. Um, that's when I'll utilize their ESW line. I'm pretty stoked on that. The jacket does snap um, as opposed to being zip. So just a really nice piece in the ESWs. I'm not gonna put it on with my Merinos right now because I wouldn't match and uh, you have to match your camos, right? All right, so we'll talk about their ESW pants. Um, these guys are, again, just lightweight, hot weather. Um, stretch material so really comfortable um, pockets all have the silent snap buttons on them so it's virtually impossible to make noise with them um, extra zips in the pockets, so a lot of functionality there but they, this is a new line for them uh, really really stoked to, to hunt this fall with it um, but yeah ESW hot weather gonna be awesome to be able to hunt heat and stay cool. So another new uh, new lineup this year for them is their Apex hoodie, um, new piece of gear. Uh, these guys have reinforced elbows. They're actually elbow pads you can take out of them. Um, front zipper pouch, which is nice for a range finder, whatever you wanna throw in there. It's mostly spot and stock is what this is designed for. A Little bit heavier than the lightweight Merino wool, but it is a Merino nylon blend. Um, so really comfortable and then one of my favorite things is like most of Sitka's hoodies um, this guy has a little bit longer tail on it so like bending down you don't have to worry about it riding up um, side pocket with a zip zip front pouch uh, and then the mesh face mask is awesome um, I like keeping my uh, my neck and head warm so even their uh, their lightweight merino base layer has that face mask in it. Um, so comfortable. Um, so yeah, that's the Apex. That'll be good in when it starts to get a little bit cooler, but it's still not not pretty cool. I could, I could also see myself using this um, as kind of a layer uh, instead of a, a little bit thicker uh, base layer. Uh, we're stacking this on top of the, the lightweight merino wool, so. Next up, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to talk about the Apex pants a little bit. Uh, these guys have been awesome for scouting, just like the ESW. If it gets a little bit colder, I'll throw these on um, with the Merino base layers. Um, but yeah, these guys are sweet. All right, so the Apex pants, um, just like uh, the ESW, silent snap on the pockets. Um, there's actually an internal mesh pocket. So for turkey season this year, it was awesome because I could keep my calls separate from, uh, from other stuff in that pocket. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, lightweight. Um, this will be good. A little bit heavier than the ESW, I think. Uh, I'll use it when it starts to get a little bit cooler. So another nice thing, um, most of their, actually I think all of their flies are the double zip. So you can zip up or down, which is good if you really have to go. Uh, kind of important to be able to have access there to your body. Um, micro fleece inside, so if you aren't wearing base layers, they're really comfortable. Um, most of my scouting trips this year, just because it's a lot of hiking, um, I don't typically put on base layers, but they work great. I think next up, I wanna talk about rain gear, um, because that's something that I, I think is really important in my kit. Um, I like days when there's a light drizzle, but I don't like being soaked. Um, so the rain gear that I chose to go with is this stuff right here. 
So this is both the uh, pants and the jacket, the Thunderhead series from Sitka. Uh, it's Gore-Tex, so Gore-Tex keeps the rain off you. Um, what impressed me the most about this is how, uh, how quiet it is for rain gear. Uh, a lot of rain gear you have that, like that swish that you get when you wear it. Um, but these are really comfortable. We'll see if I can knock a bow down. Um, yeah, really comfortable. Um, so Velcro around the, the wrist, so you have the wrist straps, so you can tighten that down, no rain's getting in um, anywhere you don't want it to be. They also have zip pockets, two zip pockets in the side chest. Sorry about the extra noise there from the microphone sitting right here. But rain gear is, uh, like I said, it's essential for me because I really like those uh, light drizzle mornings. Um, I. If it's a if it's torrential downpour, I probably won't be hunting, but I might want to sit. Um, and then if that rain lets up and deer are moving, um, not being completely soaked and freezing um, might get an opportunity that I wouldn't otherwise get if I didn't have a good set of rain gear. So, Thunderhead, uh, it's good stuff. Pretty stoked to hunt some uh, hunt some rain this year in it. All right, I went ahead and just threw on the pants. Um, because you probably don't want to see me without pants on. Um, the Equinox line is probably going to be my main white tail. Uh, I'll probably wear this the majority of the time uh, because it's. I feel like it'll be good um, when it gets a little cooler, but it's also going to be good uh, if it's a little warm outside. Um, these I ha I've had, I hunted in them. Um, I didn't really hunt a lot second season in them. Uh, because it's so cool that I just had their fanatic stuff on. I'll talk about that in a, in a second. Um, but yeah, they have this and the jacket. Um, no hood on the jacket, but uh, it does have, uh, because when I'm in the tree stand, I move these gaiters and grab my harness. So I do wear a safety harness when I'm in the tree. These guys have um, the safety harness strap so you can pull that through the jacket. Um, which is awesome. It's, it's more comfortable for me to wear that um, harness underneath the jacket and not have to worry about it kind of pulling up on the jacket. Uh, side zip pocket, also rangefinder pouch, which is, is really nice if you aren't wearing a bino pouch, um, just to be able to throw your rangefinder in two zip pockets. Um, but yeah, the Equinox line, it'll be great hiking too, um, but Again, I will probably hunt predominantly in this during whitetail season until it starts getting colder where I've got to throw some warmer stuff on or if it's raining. Um, one of the layers that, that I'd put underneath this would be the Fanatic hoodie. Uh, so I'm not gonna throw this on, but again, one of, the, one of the nice things is that added tail. You can see it in the Fanatic hoodie. Uh, most of their product has that um, to where if you're bending over or, or going down, it's not gonna ride up. Uh, which can be frustrating uh, but the fanatic hoodie really comfortable when, it, when the weather starts getting cooler uh, that's definitely going to be in my kit um, they have the added uh the added mittens on the gloves as well as the it's like a half um, half hand cover so you can rock that keep a little bit of the heat in uh, when things get a little bit colder before I talk about more insulation, uh, I do want to touch on the Ascent shirt. This is their ultra lightweight just shirt. So if it's really, really hot, um, it's another option for, for wearing it in the heat. I'm reorganizing the stuff, so I'm just piling it up there. I also need to wash it. Um, so laundry, so much fun. Um, one more jacket to talk about though, and uh, this is the Jetstream. So, the Jetstream jacket is a great all-around jacket. Uh, it's going to be good when the weather starts getting colder. It's kind of that in-between, um, in-between the Equinox and the Fanatic, where uh, you, you don't necessarily need all of these pieces to be completely comfortable. Um, you just don't have to layer as much. So if I don't have to wear four or five layers to be comfortable, if I can just put two layers on, a base layer and an outer layer, layer and be comfortable, uh, I don't have as, as much restriction, even though, uh, even though modern clothing is, is a lot less restrictive. So that's the reason why there's so many, uh, so many options or so many uh, pieces that we have in our kits. Um, 
just to give you that flexibility. But this is not 100% waterproof, but it's water repellent. Um, the outer coating on these is, is awesome. So if it's a light drizzle and I'm not expecting it to rain, or if I go out and there's like 40, 50% chance of rain, instead of wearing full rain gear, um, that it's quiet, but it's not as quiet. Um, this will be a go-to as well as when things start to get cooler. So um, Matt, I'm pretty sure this is what he wore all the time uh, on our Utah hunt last year. So he highly recommended that to us and uh, I, I think it's gonna be an awesome piece in the kit. As far as insulation goes, we talked about the Fanatic hoodie. Um, the Calvin vest, this is gonna be the main piece that I have um, for my core. It's the Calvin light vest. Um, it's just a, just a heavy duty vest, um, keeps warmth in. Um, I like having a vest for insulation. I have more uh, full length down jackets underneath things and uh, I'm, not as ha I'm not as happy even though, again, modern clothing is less restrictive than, um, than it's ever been because of modern technology. But I like having my arms free and really your core is what gets cold and what causes you to get cold. So Calvin Light jacket. I do have a, a couple old pieces that I will throw on from time to time. Uh, this is just the Kuyu, their Peloton. Um, and then I have the Under Armour, their 3.0, I think. Um, base layers for the 3.0. If it is like negative 15 degrees, I'll stack that stuff on underneath the, uh, the Fanatic. Um, and then uh, this is just a Woolrich jacket that my dad um, had. I've hunted in it from when I was like, 13, 14, all the way up till a couple years ago. I'll just wear this around the house or every once in a while just when I'm out hiking just because uh, no other reason than that. Um, and then the Fanatic um, jacket. Um, this guy and the bibs for the ultra cold weather. Probably won't get in these until November. Um, because I don't foresee needing to. Um, but second season last year, 100% clutch. Um, I would not have sat as long as I did. I don't even know that I would have been successful last year if I couldn't have sat and, uh, and observed deer movement. And when it's zero degrees outside, free, absolutely freezing, and you can stay warm with a, a base layer in that, life is good. They do some things like it's got the grunt tube um, pouch on the front. Uh, it's got the, uh, the range finder pouch as well as the front muff zip. Um, and then the bibs are awesome too. So they also, in the Fanatic, it has the, the same, uh, the pull through for the safety harness. And that's about my kit. Uh, if you have any questions on the Sitka gear stuff, I tried to go through that as quick as I could because there is a lot of it. Um, a lot of the information is right on their website, uh, I think sitkagear.com. But if you have any questions, just throw us a comment and, uh, and we'll try to get to them. But really stoked on this fall. Um, next week's vlog will actually have some hunting in it. So that's awesome. Can't wait. All right, guys, I'm going to run through what I'm going to wear here this season in Pennsylvania for a whitetail. So it's an early season uh, starting early season for us starting September 29th. Usually it's pretty warm. The foliage is still out. It hasn't turned yet, so it's pretty green. So I'm going to wear my mountain stuff that's the subalpine early, early season uh, for a couple weeks. So I'll probably start off with uh, a merino base. So they have the lightweight merino uh, base layers and the Ascent shirt, which is super lightweight. Might even just wear this in and then put on the base layers later. Uh, that's probably what I'm gonna start with and run, the Ascent shirt and pants, when it's really, really warm, uh, especially in an evening sit, and then I can layer up with uh, the Apex stuff if I wanted to. Um, and then as the season progresses, so we got, we got the Merino wool, the Ascent stuff, and the Apex stuff as layers, and then I also have the Kelvin hoodie that I can lay on top 
if I want to worry about uh, staying on subalpine. All that stuff, I believe, will work just as well for early season in Pennsylvania as it would in a tree stand as it would um, out west. But then we have all of our mid to late season stuff. Um, some of the must-have pieces, in my opinion, uh, for the whitetail guy. Equinox stuff is uh, kind of mid-weight, but if it's still really, really hot, um, they came out with a new line this year, which is the ESW stuff. Again, it's a lot like the Ascent, super, super lightweight, four-way stretch. Um, here in Pennsylvania, sometimes even mid-October, you get some 80-degree days. This stuff would be awesome for any evening hiking into a stand. So I find myself probably going to use this as well uh, here in Pennsylvania. But as, as it gets a little colder, uh, they make an Equinox system. I have that as well. I'll probably wear the Equinox system quite a bit. I know Mark wears the Equinox a lot because he uh, hikes in pretty far. So he likes that. But uh, I, I am in love with the Fanatic series. So the Fanatic hoodie is a must have. It has the, the face mask in it. Um, so I probably wear the Fanatic hoodie the most out of everything. Um, so I'll be switching to the, um, what is it, Elevated 2, I believe, pattern, uh, probably as soon as the leaves start to fall and drop. Um, I, like, I like this pattern for late season and, and even into the mid-season there. So once the leaves start to fall, I'll wear the Fanatic stuff. I have it in black for in the blind and then the Jetstream uh, vest as well. So lots of options here, but um, if you're looking for a couple pieces for uh, Whitetail, here's what I recommend. The Fanatic hoodie, the Shacket. So I wear the Fanatic hoodie uh, with Merino bases, the Shacket, which I love. Uh, the, the open sleeves kind of keeps your core warm, but uh, you don't have as much on your arms. So the Shacket, and the Equinox, the, the Merino wool with the Equinox pants. And then as the, the night comes or it gets cold, we got the Ultimate, which I usually don't need this until November, uh, the Fanatic, the Fanatic stuff. So this is the heavyweight Fanatic system. And then you've got the bibs as well, which you cannot walk into the stand with this stuff on because you will roast. But as far as staying warm in the stand, it's it's top of the line. So that's kind of my the rundown of the systems I have. Obviously the, the gloves, the merino gloves and beanie. Um, but I like to hear so I get stuff on my head. Uh, Finn will be running the open country. I believe this is the can't even remember the name of this system because there's a few things out of stock but it's a nice nice lightweight system for kids so he'll be wearing this early season and then he has the Kelvin it's the Kelvin hoodie and Stratus pants and then he also has the Stratus jacket. So these are windbreaker, uh, wind does not go through. So a lot of times I'll have them wear this and then throw the Kelvin, Kelvin jacket over top. Um, one thing Sika doesn't do, and they have a lot of pieces so it makes it tough is on the tags, they don't, uh, they don't have, like on the main tags, this hanger just snapped. They don't have what product it is. So it's hard to remember with all the different uh, things they have, which product it actually is, um, but on the main tags, they have them. So when you rip them off, you'll forget what it is. But anyway, Spin has a nice system, early season system and a late season system. Um, you know, to kind of tell you about the Stratus stuff and uh, the Stratus compared to the Fanatic. Stratus is also a good, good for uh, mid season kind of all around. Finn wore this and this Kelvin hoodie in late season. I think it was uh, the 
temperatures were in the single digits and he was warm. He was literally falling asleep uh, on the ground during rifle season. So if that tells you anything, you know, kids get pretty cool pretty easy. He was warm in this system. So that speaks for it in itself. Uh, so those are the kind of the clues, the rundown of what I'm going to be doing. And then I'm going to be running uh, the tool bucket pack again. I used to have this pack back in the day and loved it. So it's easy, easy for camera gear. Uh, it opens up pretty easily. Big tool bucket, so you can open it up just like this. And then hang it. You can put all your calls in here. All your camera gear goes down in here, or launch your food. Super easy to organize. Um, and I haven't found a pack that's better in the tree stand and uh, a tool bucket. So I'm excited to get that back in my hands. And then maybe early season I'll run one of my other packs that I have here. Uh, one of the, the, the subalpine packs. Uh, I can't remember which is which, but uh, I'll be running one of those probably early season. But if you're into camo, it doesn't really matter if you match, but I'm one of those guys that likes to match. So it's kind of my system, guys. Um, if you have any questions, hit us up. Thanks for watching as always. Stay safe and shoot straight.